Where would we be right now if Warner Brothers stuck with the Zack Snyder plan, his five movie arc, and, you know, including, which is as well as the five movie plan, Ben Affleck's The Batman, David Ayer's The Suicide Squad, and also the original idea for the Flash movie they were going to do. If WB had allowed the man to deliver what he wanted to deliver, where would we be now? Where would DC be now? Would it be in a much better position or would it be in a worse position? The thing is the way Zack did Man of Steel when David Goyer and Christopher Nolan is like ripping off the plaster very, very quickly. And it hurts because, as I've said many times, Man of Steel is a contemporary version not only of Superman, but of DC as well. It doesn't necessarily faithfully adhere to the DC comics themselves or the feeling of Superman or the myth of Superman, but it's very, very contemporary. It sets out to modernize DC and Superman and these other DC iconic characters. And I was thinking about what to talk about on my video today and I thought this was very good because basically film and entertainment find themselves in a very interesting position right now because we were you know we were in this trend and success of superhero genere it was superheroes this in cinema superheroes that and all of a sudden you know the comic book movie is becoming more and more redundant every day and you could ask the question is it really worth Warner Brothers Discovery's time energy and money to invest in a new DC franchise when superheroes and comic book movies are becoming redundant it's a big risk we'll see how James Gunn Peter Saffron and David Zaslav pull this in you know whether they're able to pull this off or not We'll have to wait and see. But it is interesting to me, if they allowed Zack Snyder to do his thing, would it have been successful? Would it have been a, a satisfying franchise? Would it have ended in the right way? You're probably asking the wrong person, because I really like what Zack was doing and where Zack was taking us. Now, I do believe that if they allowed him to do his five movie plan and also including Affleck's The Batman, The Flash movie they were going to do as well and David Ayer's, you know, original Suicide Squad movie I think all that would have worked. I think the audience would have come to terms with what Snyder was doing because there was a lack of patience from the audience and the studio in Zack Snyder's plan. It was a puzzle piece. It was a franchise. It was a plan. It was an arc. And like every arc, you've got to give it a chance to be completed so you can totally understand it. It's a bit like doing a puzzle. When you're doing a puzzle, you don't really understand where all the pieces go. And I'm talking about a complicated puzzle, not a child's puzzle. And so until you complete the puzzle, you don't see the full picture of the painting and design of the puzzle and this is exactly what Zack Snyder was attempting to do and no one really wanted to give him a chance why because it was different it was unique it was pioneering and as Man of Steel says people hate what they don't understand they didn't give the man a chance but if we allowed it to come to its natural conclusion I think DC would have been in a much stronger position. And I think when I look at DC now, and I look them of the mess the DCEU became in the end, you know, after Snyder left with, you know, Berg and Johns and Hamada, I think we can safely say that by the time the Snyderverse reached its natural conclusion, I think we would have been in a much better position now. That's just my personal opinion. Now, there's some people who will never agree with me on that. It's about patience and faith in an all-tours plan. 
and they never allowed Zach to finish that plan. You know, there's lots of passionate opinions about Zack Snyder's DC Extended Universe, and I respect all opinions. This, this, you know, this platform is about listening to all the voices and making our own individual minds up about what we think about a studio. But people started to become very illogical when it came to Zack Snyder because people had already made their minds up even before they brought him on to do Man of Steel. Because many people hated Zack for what he did with Watchmen. Now, personally, I think Watchmen is an outstanding movie, but I come from a point of view of not reading the graphic novel or graphic novels. So I can watch Watchmen without having those preconceived ideas. Now, of course, when it comes to Superman, and Batman and Wonder Woman, I have plenty of preconceived ideas. I understood that Zack was doing something very, very contemporary, very different and very unique. And I was quite happy for him to do it because I think the only way you can bring these characters into live action is to do your own thing. You can't copy and paste the comic books. I assume that's exactly what James Gunn's going to do. Pretty much com copy and paste what's in the comics. This is what people have been screaming for. This is what so-called real DC fans have been screaming for. Let's see if that works. But Zack Snyder was never allowed to complete what he started. He wasn't allowed to finish what he started. And in the end, you have a franchise that makes no sense. And we've seen the disinterest in the DCEU since Shazam. The box office and the excitement um, has bottomed out. And there's no question about that. The box office for The Flash and F Shazam Fury of the Gods is insane. But also... There's another situation coming, and that's the release of Blue Beetle. A 50 million domestic opening is hideous, and there's no defending that either. Not that we ever expect Blue Beetle to make a lot of money. We'll have to wait and see about the quality of the film. But as it stands right now, the DCEU finishes with a whimper, and not a bad. But... You can't call from Shazam onwards the DCEU. I call Man of Steel the DCEU. I call Batman vs Superman the DCEU. I call Suicide Squad, the original Suicide Squad, DCEU. Even though it's not David Ayer's movie and it's not part of Zack's vision, you know, it was part of what they were going to do. So I kind of see that as the DCEU. I also see Wonder Woman definitely as DCEU. I see Zack Snyder's Justice League as DCEU, and that's where it ends. Now, you can argue whether Aquaman is DCEU or not. This is where Hamada came in, and they started to make these changes, and the Aquaman film is certainly a very different film than Zack Snyder originally envisioned it when he first cast Jason Momoa. But it is a very epic movie. It did make a billion dollars. So I'd say it's partially a DCEU movie and partially not. But when you get to Shazam, you're no longer dealing with the, you know, the DCEU Snyderverse any longer. These are, I don't know what to call them. They're very um, underwhelming films, if you like. I think they're all very underwhelming films. I think probably... James Gunn's The Suicide Squad and Black Adam are a best out of a bad bunch, if I'm being honest. I really like Black Adam. I thought The Rock put an outstanding team of people together. He and his partners did the best they could do, and they made a really exciting movie. Was it the best thing ever? No. But it was very entertaining, and I don't think anyone else could have done more with a Black Adam film. The problem with Black Adam is nobody asked for a Black Adam film. Nobody wanted a Black Adam film. I think they would have been better served in making a Justice Society of America film, considering 
it features the JSA heavily in the Black Adam movie, they were probably better off going down that direction. Because there's no question, the JSA are actually the best thing about Black Adam. Especially Hawkman. I thought Aldis Hodge was outstanding. I thought Piers Brosnan was outstanding as Dr. Fate, a.k.a. Kent Nelson. They're the best things about that movie. And the, you know, the, you know, the score from composer, um, it, and I keep on forgetting his name, but he's one of the best composers in Hollywood. That is in my mind. I listen to that um, score all the time. So I wouldn't say that Black Adam was a bad movie. It was just a movie that nobody cared about and nobody wanted to watch, even with Henry Cavill's Superman returning. And, you know, he was supposed to be returning for good as Superman. And, oh boy, was that a great post credit scene. And probably the film would have made even less money if Henry didn't cameo in that film. So it was a very exciting movie. The Rock had big plans, you know, Adby and DeLuca had big plans, and it's a shame they never paved out, but it is a business. Um, so if you don't make the money, you can't get the sequels, I'm afraid, and you can't continue with the plan. Whether it was right or wrong to replace Henry as Superman and go, you know, go to Gunn's kind of direction in, in what Gunn's planning, well, the only way we're going to know that is if we see, when we see, actually, if we see, Gun's plan because we do live in an uncertain future because this industrial action isn't finishing anytime soon, and that's the issue here. So, I do feel that Zach was done, you know, Zach was done bad, you know, Zach was treated terribly. Zach had a great vision, Zach had a plan, whether you like that plan or not, a plan is better than no plan at all. And there's no question that Johnson Berg had no plan. That Hamada kind of had a mishmash of a plan, but as we can see right here and right now, it's a plan that has not worked. It hasn't helped that James Gunn has come in during the kind of the final straight of this plan and Gunn has made changes. That certainly hasn't helped what Walter Hamada was planning. But I keep on saying this, you can't build a barge, right, with faulty wood, because you're going to sink. They took the Zack Snyder plan, they recycled, you know, the Zack Snyder plan, first of all, with Justice League, and they keep on doing it. And, and you know, that's, that's without getting into the subject of James Gunn confusing DC fans. Is it a reboot? Is it a soft reboot? Nobody really knows. At first we were told that, or we assumed, that the Suicide Squad universe that James was building up is part of this new plan. But he's actually said that his Suicide Squad movie isn't canon. That makes no sense considering he is going to develop a Peacemaker season two. So will Waller and Peacemaker be part of that universe? Well, yes, they will be part of that universe. But he's confusing audiences again. When he said, at first he said, Superman Legacy will be the first movie in the new DC universe. Now he's saying Blue Beetle will be the first character in his new DC universe, but Superman Legacy will be the first movie. Now that doesn't really confuse me, but it is confusing to others because it's not straight. Of course he's saying that Blue Beetle is the first DC Universe character because he wants to have a straight playing field. He wants to give Blue Beetle every opportunity to be successful. And he believes if Blue Beetle is the first DC Universe character and people know it's part of his new plan and he's planning for Zola Maraduna's Blue Beetle to be part of the future, the people may be invested. Here's the stark truth. Whether you're a DC fan or a Marvel fan, CBMs and even comic book shows up to a point have become redundant. People are bored of sequels and reboots and superhero movies, right? And prequels, right? The success of Barbie and Oppenheimer has released 
the engines, if you like, because people are free. They can just watch a movie without having to watch 20 other movies. Do you get it? It's not a sequel. It may be a one-off. I doubt it's a one-off with the kind of money that it's making. Same with Oppenheimer. It's a one-off biopic. People are free to watch movies again without it being serialized. CBMs did very well. They were the conversation piece and the trend since Iron Man, since 2008's Iron Man. But we see the trouble that Disney are in with the MCU. And let's be honest, the DCEU never lifted up. I loved what Zack Snyder did, but because they never allowed him to finish what he started, the DCEU is finishing with a whimper and not a ban. You can't convince me that if they left that man alone to formulate and mould his franchise, that it wouldn't have finished successfully. Man of Steel made a solid 650. Again, BVS made 850. Again, I would call that solid. And, you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League had favourable reviews. You know, the Rotten Tomato scores from, you know, official critics, you know, and fans was very positive. Now, we really, you know, there's no official figures for what that movie made, you know, in terms of HBO Max subscribers and physical sales. But I can tell you, and as you already know, if you try to pre-order Zack Snyder's Justice League on physical media, it was sold out straight away. So it shows you that it was a success. So if we actually got Zack Snyder's Justice League, Zack Snyder's Justice League 2, and Zack Snyder's Justice League 3, I think, again, they would have made at least solid box office, because they're certainly better than what we got from the DCEU at the end. This is the problem with studios. With their fear, they made worse decisions than what originally were made. The logical decision was to allow Snyder to finish his arc and finish his plan, allow Affleck to actually make his Batman movie. Release David Ayer's movie. And it is looking like the air cut, I think, anyway, I've got a sniffle of some rumours that the air cut will be released eventually. I really, really hope so. I would love to see that movie. But it should have been released in 2016 as originally planned. What they did to his movie was hideous. What they did to Zack Snyder's Justice League with Justice League was hideous. And they keep on getting their karma. Because as you can see, WB, in terms of non-superhero movies, have been doing really well. June, Elvis, Barbie. Creed Free, they're making money on these movies. It's just DC that's a problem for them. They've never been able to tap into what DC is and what DC should be. But they brought Snyder in, or should I say, they never wanted Snyder. It was Nolan that wanted Snyder, but they brought him in. So you allow him to make the movies, because his movies wasn't losing money. They, were, they wasn't making the money that they wanted. I agree about that. But once you set the ball rolling, it's very difficult to lock it back in again and chain it up. And that's the problem with that. Sorry about that. I just had a coughing fit. So I had to press pause very, very quickly. Apologies. I mean, I could talk about this Zack Snyder situation all day, but I'm not a prophet. I am not Nostradamus. I don't know what would have happened if they stuck with Snyder. But if you add one and one, you're going to get two, aren't you? Surely the situation ends better than it has now. So many different people thinking they know better than Zack Snyder. Quite clearly, they don't. Jeff Johns is a prolific comic book writer. He had no idea, right? But Jeff Johns was part of the DC and WB furniture. So he was always involved and he didn't like what Snyder was doing. Because what Snyder was doing was triggering people at DC Comics 
and WB because it was so different. It was so gritty and it was so dark and they didn't like it. It was against what they believed. So it wasn't just some elements of the fandom that were angry with Snyder. It was people at DC Comics and people at the studio as well because it was so, you know, it was so on another level. I never personally had those emotions. I never thought, oh my God, this is not Superman the movie. This is not Batman 89. How can you do this? I thought this is wonderful. It's epic. It's, you know, it's compelling. Zimmer's and Junkie XL's music is loud and brash. It's like a fucking opera. I loved what Snyder was doing and I'm gutted that it looks like we'll never see the conclusion of that. But I do believe if they allowed this man to finish what he started, we would have had something special. And I think DC would have been in a much better position right now. And I'll say what I've said all through this. What, when I first started this channel in July 2018, when I made the decision to stand with the rest of you and fight for the release of the Snyder Cut, I said that... The Snyderverse, the DCEU, was a great alternative to Kevin Feige's MCU. The MCU was very, very mainstream and very, very popular, right? It was popcorn chomping movies. And what Snyder was doing was the opposite of that. And that is good because you've got something very, very different. It's a bit like Oppenheimer and Barbie. The reason that Barbie Heimer works and they're going to see each movie is because Barbie is very pink and bright and brash and Oppenheimer is very, very kind of darker, grittier. It's a very grim story and the director is all about realism. So one film opposes the other film and that's good. Nobody wants to see one film and then go and watch exactly the same film. And this is why people are bored of sequels and reboots and CBMs now. They want to see a variety of content. And that makes sense. That's very, very logical. That's exactly what I want to see. I don't want to see the total end of comic book movies. I'm not totally done with them. I want to see great comic book movies I want to see great romantic comedies, I want to see great biopics, etc, etc, etc. But one of the best things about the Snyderverse, as I've already said, was that it was an alternative to what Fake and Marvel were doing. And nobody seemed to understand it because WB wanted to make the money they were making. They wanted that popcorn chopping kind of mainstream kind of fare. And because half of the audience were, you know, shitting on Snyder. WB just couldn't handle it anymore. The journalists, Access Media, critics, you know, the YouTubers, the content creators were all getting at Zach. It was terrible. I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It's interesting that Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi got defended by those same people while the Snyderverse, especially BVS, was being shut on. What's the difference? Johnson took Star Wars and did something extremely different or different with it. By the way, I don't go with the comparison that what Johnson was doing was as pioneering as what Snyder was doing with the DCEU. No. Basically, Johnson was being very, very mischievous and his kind of motivations were very alt-left motivated. That's not what Snyder was doing. Snyder was going down his own artistic direction. And Warner Brothers used to be about supporting directors like Zack in that artistic expression. But they wanted to become Disney. They wanted to make Disney money. They became greedy and very, very capitalist in a way. And very, very un-Warner Brothers. This wasn't the studio the brothers created and the studio that actually greenlit the Harry Potter franchise and the Lord of the Rings franchise as well and made many a great movie in the past 50 to 100 years. And so what they did to Zack was in opposition of their very own legacy. And I believe that if they just allowed the man 
to do what he wanted to do, we'd be in a better position now. In a way, it doesn't matter because we can't change history. But we're just having a discussion here. Because as we look at cinema, and cinema is changing now. Many people believe we're going to get a second coming of movies in cinemas now. Thanks to Barbie, thanks to Oppenheimer, and thanks to the fact that CBMs are no longer the in thing and no longer a trend, this frees Hollywood up to make whatever the fuck it wants. And if it's good, and if they take the time, and they put artistic integrity into it, like with Barbie, like with Oppenheimer, they will reap the rewards. And if they gave, if they gave Snyder the faith he deserved, then they would have reaped the rewards with the Snyderverse in the end. But they didn't do that. They panicked. They bent the knee to the bloggers, the journalists, and the fans who didn't like what Snyder was doing. And we find ourselves with a broken DC universe. Um, a broken DC universe, not because of Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder was trying to do something very contemporary and very new and very unique. I think that's a good thing sometimes. But the fandom is split down the middle over this. So we're never going to find agreement over if Snyder did the right thing or the wrong thing. If Snyder broke the DCEU, whether it was AT&T, whether it was Johnsonburg or Hamada, I think it was everyone who could take a slice of the blame and they weren't willing to work together to, you know, allow Snyder to finish what he started. They interfered, they panicked, and this is why we are where we are now, because they panicked. And it's, it's very sad, but I'm also very happy that I can watch Man of Steel, Batman vs Superman, the Ultimate Edition, and Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut any time I want. These are three of the greatest comic book movies ever made, as far as I'm concerned. They're great, we can watch them whenever we want, we can celebrate them any time we want. So it's not all doom and gloom. But we could have had so much more if people just had patience. And the problem is there's no patience in movie fans, geeks and nerds anymore. They want instantaneous success. So Barbie suits them. It's making money. It's there. People love it. Let's make a Mattel franchise. Look, it's successful. Barbie's going to make a billion dollars and God knows how much more money they're making on, you know, on the toys and the merchandise and all of that. It's insane. But Snyder has always divided audiences. I personally, as a fan of Snyder, have never totally understood why people disregard him so much, hate him, in fact, so deeply, because he's not a troublesome individual. He's softly spoken, he's kind, he's compassionate, he's one of the few men who actually knows how to represent women on the big screen in a great way. I give you Amy Adams' Lois Lane, I give you Feora, I give you his version of Lara, Superman's mum on Krypton. I could go on in his other movies. He's one of the few modern day directors that actually give females a stage he, he builds them up, they're muscular, they're fighters. You know, isn't this what we want from women? Isn't this what woke Hollywood have been trying to do? So why isn't Zack Snyder praised for anything good that he does? Why do they hate him so deeply? The fans hate him because he's different. It's as simple as that. But why is there elements of DC Comics and in Hollywood that don't like him? Because he's seen as someone, he's basically seen like the character that Clint Eastwood played, the man with no name. He comes to Hollywood, he went to art school in London, he did a few ads, they see him as an outsider. They see him as someone who really doesn't deserve to be there. But the truth of the matter is, Zack Snyder deserves to be in Hollywood a lot more than most of these other creatively bankrupt fuckwits. If you ask me, he's an ultra talented dude. And all I can say is, 
I enjoy the Snyderverse all the time, and I'm really, really looking forward to Rebel Moon. And what a shame we didn't see the completion of the Snyderverse.